This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today from Critical Elements Lithium is Mr. John Sebastian Lavallee and Stefan Aber. How are you, gentlemen? We're good. We're doing fine. Thank you, Gerardo. How are you doing today? I am well. I am here in Austin. Stefan, I understand you are in Germany where it's nighttime, correct? Yes, it is. And JS, where are you based out of? I'm based from uh, Montreal. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's uh, let's chat, guys. We talked a bit off air, and I explained that I think your timing is excellent with the flagship, and I want to get into the Rose Project and why that's important. But before that, it's really impressive to me when I look at a company that's actually looking to put something into production and get it permitted. It's interesting to me to see if management has done that in the past. And when I look at the management team and the experience, it's clearly a team that knows how to develop, permit, and monetize an asset. Can each of you give me just a brief background on that extensive experience? Yes, it will be a pleasure. I can start on my side. Um, I'm a geologist by background, uh, coming from a mining family. Both my grandfather will, were a mining engineer, geologist engineer, been involved in mine. My father is also involved in the industry, and my uncle is a materialist. So mainly uh, I come from mining. Um, I'm involved with the project since the discovery. Uh, from an outcrop at surface, now at uh, physics study level complete, and uh, we're working to put the permit in place that we hope we'll get soon. So uh, it's a quick review of my background, but uh, I've been involved for the full process from the discovery up to now, and I'm happy to let Stefan introduce himself, but I think Stefan is really bringing a lot of expertise on the lithium side uh, expertise for the development of that project. Excellent. And just to be clear, JS, you're CEO and Stefan is president, correct? Exact. Excellent. Yeah, hi. Let me continue and uh, talk a little bit about myself. Uh, by profession, I'm a chemist. I did study about 30 years ago um, chemistry, organic chemistry in Germany. And I got the general management education on top of that. As a chemist, you normally start your career at one of the big uh, German uh, chemical conglomerates. And at that time, it was Höchst. And uh, I worked in several departments, chemicals, specialty chemicals, agrochemicals. After a while, I joined the pharmaceutical industry. And I've worked for six years at Aventis in the head corporate headquarters dealing with a lot of international matters on global marketing of diabetes drugs or uh, global marketing on genetically modified organism. But I've also established a joint venture in South Africa together with the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Hmm. After Aventis was taken over by Sanofi, I joined Rockwood as a, a head of the lithium division at that time. And I grew that company up from a uh, turnover of about 200 million euro. Uh, at that time, now uh, more than 800 million euro and a 40% EBITDA margin. And finally, we sold Rockwood Lithium to Albemol, which now is continuing relatively successfully uh, the lithium business um, in, in, in the world and globalizing it more and more and more. Uh, after uh, a period of silence, I moved to critical elements because critical elements holds one of the most important deposits in the world, a high purity, high grade deposit, which is qualifying for converting uh, so spodumene concentrate into high quality lithium hydroxide battery grade. It's, it's a great company, it's a great deposit with great people working there in a very disciplined way and uh, looking ahead into a bright future because of the tremendously growing electric car market. Stefan, you're being modest because you mentioned that you sold Rockwood, but you didn't explain what you sold it for, which I think was approximately 6.2 billion US in January of 2015, right? 
Correct. Yeah. And so again, it's interesting to me that you go from a sale of 6.2 billion US to a company that currently, I believe, has a market cap of just sub 50 million Canadian. You obviously believe that this is a project that you can not only permit, but get into production. Can you tell me a bit about the project? Yeah, I mean, the project is a high quality project with, let's say, a spodumene crate, which is not only qualifying for battery applications, which is already, let's say, uh, a high purity profile, but also for very special tech crate applications, which provide a huge profit margin in the tech crate area. It's a very seldom case. There's only one other case in the world uh, which qualifies for those applications. Uh, and the margins are tremendous, and that's definitely the backbone of that deposit. It has been also to mention that, let's say, the deposit in Canada is based in a very stable jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. You are not dealing with huge inflation rates, you are not dealing with political uncertainties, and you are dealing with a very reliable uh, um, government and reliable administration which uh, gives you the guarantee that you really can run a project for 20 years in a, in a smooth way. I have never seen that before in the lithium industry. Uh, I have worked in Chile, I have worked in Australia, I know the Argentinian projects, all of them are, let's say, struggling more or less each couple of years, either because of the weather and climate conditions, or because of political constraints with the local communities or inflation rates, difficulties in the exchange rates uh, and, and other issues. And that's a big advantage of Canadian projects. And that makes make it for me very attractive to join that company at that moment of time, because I'm convinced personally that the EV market is going to come and uh, it's already successful. We already uh, are seeing uh, penetration rates of 5% and more for pure electric cars here in Germany. And Germany is a country which is pretty reluctant to those new technologies. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone is forecasting penetration rates of 20, 25% already in 2025. And that means we are looking into huge demand for lithium products, a market which is going to uh, quadruple over the next coming of uh, years, and, and that makes it very attractive. And obviously, you see the price opportunities or pricing opportunities in the lithium market because, uh, let's say, a couple of years ago, the price for lithium hydroxide battery grade was just about $7.20, and now it's about 14 US dollars per kg. And that makes it very attractive. And obviously, if you are sitting on a high quality spodumene resource, it allows also you to manufacture uh, the uh, products in a very competitive way. Because whether you have a new technology or using a conventional technology, that doesn't matter. The cost of the, of the manufacturing is definitely determined mostly, and I don't want to say only, but definitely it's mostly determined by the fact of the recovery rate. So if the yields are high, your costs are going to be low. If the yields are low, obviously your costs are going to be high. And that's totally independent from the fact whether it's a high grade or low grade deposit. That's only depending on the fact what is the impurity profile of the raw material. JS, I mentioned the market cap being sub 50 million Canadian, and that's really the opportunity for shareholders and potential shareholders. Can we talk a bit about the feasibility study and the numbers there? Because the margins are compelling, the IRR is compelling, um, the mine life is compelling, and I think that's really a, a, a critical point that I want everybody to walk away with. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you look at the physical study, it's a it's a 17 years uh, mine life. Uh, you need to add to that the two years of construction. So we can say it's a generation long project. Plus the the, the resource and the reserves still open in all direction. 
We already know that there are several other zones right beside the, um, the main reserve, so it can be drilled and expand. And based on the study, the physics study, if we look at the economics, we're talking about a NPV after tax 8% discount of $726 million hmm. with an RR of 35% after tax. Um, talking about EBITDA, we're talking of an average of $180 million per year. So it's a pretty strong number based on a long-term pricing. So uh, we think it's a very robust number for the project. And this is why we are pushing right now to get a permit in place, bring a partner in and develop the project to be in production in the next year, year and a half. The CapEx for the project is relatively modest given the NPV. Can can you go over that with me briefly? It, yes, we, we're talking about a, a CapEx of 341 million. I think it's important to put a precision there if some people are doing a comparison with the Australian project. It's important to understand that in our CapEx, that number include all the mining equipment. So it means that we plan to have our own float uh, fleet of equipment to mine the, the, the pit. Uh, so if we put that out to get more comparable with Australian projects that are normally using contractor mining, uh, you need to put out about 70 million out. So uh, it's a very reasonable number uh, in terms of CapEx versus the uh, future return of the project. Excellent. I have to believe the infrastructure has to be pretty good for that capex to be as modest as it is. Yeah, we we are super lucky with the location of the project. Uh, it, it, yes, it's northern Quebec, but we have everything in place, everything being built by the development of the hydropower. Uh, there is a road access that goes right through the deposit. I will say 200 meters from the deposit. So. So uh, we're saving a lot of money there. There's a power line that actually goes right over the deposit. We actually have to move some pylons. Um, then there's a camp uh, 23 kilometers north of the deposit where uh, we plan to work with the local community to uh, use that camp and give them the lodging catering contract for all the mine workers. Plus, there's a small airport also close to the project for the fly and fly out of all the workers. So uh, we're very happy of the local infrastructure. Plus, if you go in the the, later, the the last news of last year, we signed also the impact and benefit agreement with local community, uh, with the Cree Nation of East Maine, uh, where we plan to work with them to develop the project and generate and create job and contract for them. You're fully expecting a positive permitting decision this year, correct? This is our target. You know, uh, with, with the government authorities and with the COVID, uh, for sure we saw some delay, uh, but we filed back the answer with the provincial authority. We're filing back very soon the federal it was the second round with both level. Normally, there's two round. Might have some minor question coming back, but our target is by year end to get the permit in place. Uh, you know, this is there's third party involved, so we can never warrant these these things. But we're uh, confident that we can reach a permit by the uh, year end. Stefan, you have a project that has robust economics in a stable jurisdiction excellent infrastructure and it's you know every month that passes we need more stable supplies of critical metals can you can you walk me through what potential offtake agreements or what kind of discussions you're having to help finance the construction and development of the project yeah obviously we are looking for a strategic partner that's our objective and the strategic partner would inject capital which would allow us uh, to finance at least 40, 45 percent of the construction of the conversion of the uh, concentrator plant. Uh, in exchange of that equity investment, of obviously, let's say, participating in the future earnings of the project, uh, the um, the strategic partner would get an offtake agreement, which would allow 
them to uh, take 100% of the material, which is the key point for an off-taker to secure their future raw material supply and raw material needs. Excellent. Excellent. I, I imagine that the Rolodex or the network that you have developed over mo- many, many decades, multiple decades, is, is likely proving helpful in, in the discussions. Yes, it is. Definitely. <laughs> JS, before I let you go, can you walk me through the share structure? I like the fact there's not a lot of overhang <laughs> with options and warrants. And, and, and so can you brief us on that really quick? Yeah, let's say quickly the capital structure right now. Uh, we just raised three million dollar that we closed about a year and a, a week and a half ago. Um, so after that raise, there is about 168 million shares out, and uh, four point sorry, it's uh, five million warrants out at 45 cents. No more warrants than that. They're good for two years. And option, we're talking about 6.9 million option um, with the strike price between 56 cents and $1.25. It's mainly owned by the consultant and uh, the board or management. So fully diluted, we're talking about the share structure of around 180 million shares. And... uh, it's important to understand that from that 180 million, about let's say 180 million shares fully diluted, there's about 60% of it that is controlled by a uh, long-term shareholder that being super supportive over the to- the years. Management own close to 10% of it, and we have two large broker with their clients that own one own probably 15%. The other one is close to 20%. And we have individual that own between five and eight percent each. There's three of them, so it's pretty tight structure. Yes, 180 million shares, but I think if we can uh, go into production with less than 200 million shares out, will be uh, a very um, good structure and a big reward for the shareholders. Oh, I absolutely agree. It doesn't sound like we're going to have to wait very long to figure out what the outcome on the permitting front will be. And of course, if, if, if that is positive the way we anticipate and hope, then I imagine that a strategic becomes a whole lot easier to bring in the fold. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? I think, uh, like you just said, the, the strategic will be important. And I think, you know, permit will, will unlock a strategic And like Stefan explained in terms of structure, our goal is to bring a strategic participating on the financing of the project uh, with a structure at project level that will avoid dilution, where uh, the strategic will benefit of the earnings and will also benefit of less dilution. Uh, And it will be a a real long-term partnership to develop the project and it will be beneficial for all the shareholders. So thank you. Excellent. Stefan, anything else before I let you go? No, I mean, it's a great project. And let's say we will benefit from the high quality of the resource. Gentlemen, thank you again. I'm looking forward to chatting again soon, hopefully with some uh, positive updates. Great. Thank, thank you. you Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks.